This is in the District Court of Greenwood County, Kansas, case entitled State of Kansas versus Taylor Lee Summerlin. It's case number 2021 CR 132. Richard Paw appears as defense counsel, Jill Gillette as Greenwood County attorney. Taylor Summerlin, with uh, the agreement of the court, appears remotely uh, by Zoom. This matter comes before the court at this time for further proceedings in regards to a warrant to show cause alleging probation violation. Mr. Paul, what are your client's intentions regarding these allegations, which include failure to contact his ISO as directed, failure to provide verification of his substance abuse treatment? Judge, uh, after speaking with Mr. Summerlin, he will uh, waive his evidentiary hearing, uh, admit to the violations with explanation, and proceed to disposition in this matter, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Paul. All right, Mr. Summerlin, you have a right to a due process hearing where the state would have the obligation of proving these allegations by a preponderance of the evidence. You can challenge the state's evidence, present your own, confront the state's witnesses unless good cause was shown, and among other lesser remedies, the court could consider just an outright revocation of your probation and order you to serve the remaining balance of your sentence locked up. Do you understand these things? Yes, sir. And do you waive a hearing in this case and stipulate and agree that you committed the violations which the court outlined earlier? Yes, sir. All right. Court finds that uh, Mr. Summerlin has waived his right to a hearing and stipulates and agrees that he committed the violations as alleged, failing to provide verification of his substance abuse treatment and failing to contact his ISO as directed are both serious and material violations of the terms and conditions of his probation. We will turn to disposition uh, at this point, and I'll take recommendations from the various persons involved, beginning with Jill Gillette, uh, Greenwood County Attorney. Judge, Mr. Summerlin hasn't, has, has had a long road in history in these matters. Um, and this is not his first revocation. Uh, he had a revocation in December of 23. He had to contact Mr. Catley then. Um, needed to be following uh, Mr. Catley's orders. Um, so we've had quite a few issues when it comes to Mr. Summerlin. Um, he's now over at Bel Air. Uh, this is one of those cases where everyone has gone above and beyond for Mr. Summerland. Um, this, I don't know if you remember, was the individual that was on fentanyl and meth at the same time. He had methadone. Um, we, the doctor at Holland Pathways wanted to wait a week um, before accepting him. The sheriff went all the way over and got his meds from the clinic in Wichita to give him in the jail. And then he refused to take them in the jail. Um, lots and lots of stuff was done for him for his last revocation. Um, he's uh, back in treatment again today, but I don't know how long it's going to last. We're up here on another time of him not following the directions of the court, not following his court services. Um, he had failed to report his intensive supervision officer as required. He was supposed to be contacting every Friday via phone and has failed to do so and absconded in March. Um, his whereabouts were unknown at that time and he failed to provide verification of his substance abuse treatment he was supposed to go to, which was all that mess we did in December for him. And he didn't complete it and didn't get um, all the information turned in to Mr. Ketley and his ISOs out of Wichita have had issues with him. They've bent over backwards for him. Um, if you remember and recall, uh, Mr. Gonzalez did all kinds of things to help. And I am basically at a loss of what to do other than to ask for him to serve as underlying. If the court or Mr. Catley recommends that he have sanctions and that he be reinstated, 
I'm going to leave it up to Mr. Catley. Mr. Gonzalez has had to work with him out of Sedgwick County, but he just up and absconds every time and then doesn't complete his treatment. What's to say he's not going to walk out again tomorrow? And after everyone basically moved mountains because he begged and pleaded last time, he didn't comply with all of that either. So right now he's in Holland Pathways again, but for how long? And that's where I'm at is he talks the talk, but he cannot walk the walk. And so um, I'm, I'm basically saying he needs to serve his underlying. Very well. Mr. Kentley, the court has a question. Obviously his original probation has expired by now. Correct. When was it extended and when was it extended to? Perhaps uh, Mr. Gonzalez was, can address it. I, I believe he was extended until December 22 of 24. Mr. Gonzalez, can you confirm that? Just one moment. And was that done as part of the order which uh, stemmed from the last uh, revocation yeah. proceeding? Yes, on the on at the violation hearing on December twenty first, you ordered a twelve months extension from his original termination date. Okay. Right, and I sh I show his uh, termination date effective 12 2024. Thank you. Appreciate that, gentlemen. All right, Mr. Ketley, do you have any independent input here? No, no, Your Honor, I agree with the state. I mean, I didn't put near as much effort into it as Mr. Gonzalez did, but I know he spent a lot of time trying to help Taylor, and Taylor, <clears throat> Taylor just, he would, he'd do okay for a little bit, and then he would just take off. Mr. Gonzalez, anything that you wish to say? Not at this time. It sounds like he's not putting any effort into his uh, recovery or probation. Um, I find it convenient that he is uh, now entered uh, inpatient treatment uh, again right before um, appearing in the court today. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, Mr. Pa, your recommendations regarding an appropriate disposition here? Judge, uh, Mr. Summerlin would ask me to uh, ask you to uh, put him back on probation. Judge, Back in March, he, he lost his job and he found himself homeless. He sold his phone so he could eat. According to Mr. Summerlin, he had asked Mr. Ketley to move him to 905 Corrections there in in uh, Sedgwick County because that's where Mr. Summerlin was, was living because he physically couldn't go to Eureka or, or basically out of the city of Wichita. Uh, judge, and I'm sure Mr. Summerlin would like to address the court as well. But, uh, you know, Taylor has reengaged in treatment. Uh, I've talked to his uh, substance abuse counselor, Sarah Poole. Uh, she, she thinks that uh, he is back, back on track, but, uh, you know, I know it looks suspect to the court that he, he comes in just uh, a couple weeks before having to face you, Your Honor. And, and, I would acknowledge that. So the judge, you know, he's 25 years old. He's had a lot of substance abuse issues. You know, I, th I think deep down he wants to do the right thing. It just, he just, when he gets a hurdle, it just kind of uh, shuts him down a little bit. So uh, judge, I would, uh, that's all I have. Mr. Summerland, I'm going to address you personally and ask you if you have any statements that you wish to make in mitigation of punishment or anything further that you personally would like to present to the court. Uh, yes, I I definitely recognize what this looks like on paper. Um, and I made an effort when I saw this was coming after I lost my job. And before I even lost my job, I told him on my very first meeting that at some point, I'm going to need to be switched to 905 because I don't have the means to go back and forth. I told him before it ever happened that I'm struggling financially. I, I don't always even have money for food, let alone my phone bill. So I requested more than one time to be transferred to 905 and it just kept getting kicked down the road. And when I lost my job, I was already so far behind on my bills that since I was subletting, I was out on my 
pardon my language, I was out on my ass immediately. And I made it maybe four or five days. And then I sold my phone so I could have something to eat. I All lived right, in a tent. Mr. Turner, let me stop you there. What is your understanding of this term 905? Uh, sorry, it's it's the parole office here, somewhere that I could physically go. The 905 building, it's uh, 905 You're not on North parole, Main. are you? Uh, no, it's uh, corrections, but that's that's where like I would meet uh, uh, Derek. You know, he was that's where the building he was housed in. I I asked if I could you know have access to that so that way I could still report because I knew there was going to be issues with my phone contact. I saw that coming down the line, but after I got put out, I had nowhere to go. I couldn't go to my mom's in Eureka because she's not clean. I couldn't I couldn't be there, and. The only reason that I came back to rehab was because I didn't realize that when Holland electively switched me to outpatient treatment, that that wasn't considered a a successful completion. Like I had no idea because they switched me to outpatient. And then when I lost my job, I had no way to get there. But in my mind, I had already finished. I was 90 percent of the way through the program. I wouldn't have just left. And I didn't have anywhere stable to go after that. I was living at the whim of my employer. Like I was, I didn't have anywhere to go. I did not want to leave. Like when I left, I went because they said, okay, this is what your insurance is going to cover. And, you know, we'll still be able to take care of you in outpatient treatment. You'll see us four or five days a week for this many hours a day. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm comfortable with that, that, you know, I don't really have a choice in the matter. And at the time there was family motivations as well. That was, my daughter was not getting taken care of as good as she could have been. So I, I left to help so I could start making money again. You know, I didn't just electively like, oh, I'm done with this. So like, I understand what this all looks like on paper, but that's just that's simply not what actually happened. And the reason that I agree with what you guys are saying is because you guys did bend over backwards, but I didn't just blow this off. Like I got the rug pulled out from underneath me and I did everything I could to fix it. And to be quite honest, I didn't expect to live long enough to have to answer to this. I was not... I wasn't trying to live. I lost everything, everything, all at once. I'm not looking for a pity party, but I, d I definitely don't agree with what you guys described that I did. That ain't true. And you should be ashamed of yourselves. Judge, this is the same individual who ended up calling my cell phone number from the jail after the last revocation hearing. For what purpose? Because he was refusing his meds and were angry that they were making him take the meds. They went to extra lengths to get him and Mr. Gonzalez and Mr. Ketley and the sheriff worked so hard to get him his anti-seizure med and his methadone to help him break the addiction to fentanyl. And he started refusing them in the jail right after we went and got them all for him and tried to help him extensively. So then he called, got a jailer to call my cell phone number to complain that he was being made to take his meds to help him medically so that he didn't have more seizures. So I don't want to hear any more. This is all the same stuff we heard at the last hearing. This exact same stuff we heard at the last hearing. May I respond to that? You certainly may. Okay. Um, I, I definitely noticed that there was refusal for some of the meds because I wasn't allowed to take partial doses. And shaking your head doesn't mean anything. It, it, I was there. I was told by the rehab that I could not go to rehab until my dose was at 25 milligrams a day. And I was getting 50 milligram doses for one day. So I had to either break them in half, which wasn't allowed, or not take it at all. So I tried to push through and just not take it so I could go to rehab. Like, yeah, one of the motivations was I didn't want to be in jail, but I'm, I'm not trying to just say that I didn't want to take it. Oh, I don't care that you guys did this for me. That's, that's just not fair. And I don't, I've never been homeless before in my life. So you can't say that that's what happened. All right. Like, All right. H hang on. Your, your Honor, Mr. I, Summerlin. I can't, no. Your Honor, I, I can't attest to the fact that that was one of the requirements for him to get into Holland Pathways was a reduction in medication. All right. Yeah, to a certain dose on that. And at Bel Air, where I'm at right now, 
again, I only came here because I didn't know the completion wasn't like I didn't technically complete on paper, even though I went through the whole program and Bel Air allows me to take my methadone. I never quit taking my methadone after I got outside of Holland. Like I was I I identify, identify the facility that you're currently in. Bel Air Recovery Center. Okay. And are they affiliated with another provider? Um, no, my counselor says no, they're not. Some of you. How, how is it that you became ad admitted to what appears to be an inpatient facility? I, I asked them to admit me. I came and I put the effort in to be admitted. Like no one sent me here. I, I called admissions and I got myself a bed date. All right. When did you check into the facility? The 14th. Judge, um, if I may clarify, I believe I sent a copy of a letter uh, to your assistant and Miss Gillette from Bel Air Recovery Center. All right. What is your expected out date? Uh, the 14th of December, and that's a tentative discharge. That means that they it could, could be before, it could be before, yeah. it could be a little bit after, but no more than a week in either direction. Based on the course experience, generally inpatient facilities best address people that need detoxification, somebody who's in the throes of serious drug addiction and are still using. Yes. But you're not supposed to be using at all, which is a message that we sent you two and a half years ago when you were originally sentenced. No, Your Honor, I absolutely did relapse when I, I tried to hurt myself. I tried to just finish it. That's what I meant by I didn't expect to have to answer to you guys. I was done. I, I had nowhere else to go, and I was living in a tent. I was ready to be done. So what do you think should happen today, Mr. Summerlin? I think that this is a moment where everyone is mad at me, and I understand that, but I've never been in this position before in my life. Everyone just looks at it like it is on paper. I, I know I deserve another chance. I've been busting my ass to make this work. I've, I've never once pretended like I didn't mess up, and I've, I'm not sitting here and said, oh, you know, pity me. And that's not true. That didn't happen. I've owned every single thing that you guys have said, every bit of it. But how it looks on paper is just, it's extremely robotic. It's not human. That doesn't account for what was happening. I don't know if any of you have ever lived in a tent, but I know what it's like to have to go find a bridge that's not adjacent with the wind so I could sleep. So I wasn't freezing. I know what it's like to go four or five days without food. That's not, that's what the last few months have been for me. I haven't been just living it up, it's sconding. I had to beg, and that just breaks that breaks you. I I barely like I didn't expect to be able to get out of jail, but I called my ex employer that was supposed to be helping me with the job, and he said, "Well, uh, I'll bail you out, but you're working at an extremely low rate." And I didn't even like I was working for free. I was literally working for free. I didn't have anything or anyone. I was lucky to get a friend to let me stay on a couch one night a week. If that, everything I own is in a duffel bag here. Everything I own. I lost everything else. I had a car before that was mine. It got impounded and I couldn't get it back. I, everything I own fits in a backpack. And like I said, I don't have anywhere else to go that's safe for me. I didn't relapse while I was out on the street because I wanted to get high. I was trying to kill myself. I didn't, th this is just, this is callous. This is extremely callous. They're describing me like a crook. <laughs> That's just not me. I I've done everything I can to make this work. I told him before it was an issue that I needed to be able to report here or I was going to fail. I guess at the end of the day, I I'm either going to, you guys are either going to hear me and, and understand what was going, what I was going through. Or you're going to throw the book at me. I don't have any control over that, but the way that it was described is not at all what happened. I Judge, what he's, I did wrong. He's already been sanctioned once by the supervising officer for two days. The court sanctioned him. And then he's also been in custody 
with Harvey County um, recently in October. And he has had other law enforcement contact. Um, so he has been at Sedgwick County and at Harvey County in the meantime. And the Sedgwick County dates were back in May and the Harvey County was in October. Respond to that. Moment. Yes, you may. Okay, those were all not new cases whatsoever. They were whopped charges and stuff that got brought back up, and I didn't have an address for them to let me know that I had court, so it just went into bench warrant status. None of those were newly acquired charges. It was stuff that happened before. I didn't get in any trouble. They just came and got me. And, Your Honor, just to clarify, he was reporting to, to Sedgwick County till he was kicked out of treatment. And they sent him back. And I had him reporting by phone because I knew he couldn't make it over here. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Mr. Summerlin, one thing that puzzles me is that I have in your file an appearance bond, uh, which apparently was uh, done over in Harvey County with the assistance of B&K Bonding out of Salina, this court had set on your arrest warrant to show cause $3,000 cash or surety. How does a penniless, homeless guy like you make that $3,000 bond? Like I said, my ex-employer bailed me out so he could get cheap labor out of me. An obscene number of hours in exchange for me bailing you out at this. And that's exactly what happened. That's what I meant by working for free. Very well. The court has heard all of the recommendations that have been made today. But for someone, in the interest of justice, this court is going to presuppose that there was an appropriate professional evaluation done of your then current condition, which led to you being admitted to an inpatient, essentially a detox facility, uh, where you currently are. Uh, it also is logical that it's going to be one of those traditional 30-day programs where you would have an expected out date about December the 14th. Court considers it in the best interest of this offender and in the interest of justice to allow you to complete that. Um, if nothing else, uh, if there is benefit to be received from the program that you're currently in, you're essentially well into it. The court wants to see you complete it. Now, I don't know exactly how you're paying for it, and I'm not going to get into that. But I'm going to also presuppose that what you've represented here is correct and that you're going to be in this facility till approximately December the 14th. This court will therefore then defer uh, its announcement on disposition until Thursday, December the 26th, which is my next Greenwood County court date. Mandy, can you suggest an afternoon time that we can resume proceedings in this case and the court can announce an appropriate disposition? 1.15 p.m. Mr. Paw? Yep, doesn't make me happy, but I'll be there. <laughs> All right. December 26th, 1.15 p.m. Summerlin, uh, you're going to be out of there December the 14th or around that date. You should have no problem arranging transportation. I don't care if you have to ride a bicycle or even walk. But you're going to appear at the Greenwood County Courthouse in Eureka. Uh, I don't know where else you would participate from after your release from the facility. And you're not going to be at the facility anymore. So the one place I know that you can participate from is the Greenwood County Courthouse in Eureka, Kansas. You're going to have to use whatever resources that you have available to you to make sure you're there. And, and only that location. It's the only one I'll approve. I am deferring your disposition, I think, to benefit you. Therefore, you will have 12 days to get yourself to Eureka 
and to participate from the Greenwood County Courthouse location on that date. And that is 1.15 p.m. on December 26. Understood. Um, Your Honor, I've, I, I, I don't know how to ask how else to ask, so I'll just I'll just be straight. Like I've been looking into sober living places here. Is that something I should just not worry about doing? Because well, we're recommending you go to at, at this point, at this point, I want you to successfully complete the inpatient program that you're in and show up for court on December the 26th at 115. I make no promises here. Understood. I just believe Judge. that it's in the interest of justice for you to complete this program that you're in. Whoever is the individual feeding him information at the treatment facility shouldn't be doing so. He has an attorney to take care of legal advice. So noted. I do appreciate the facility and their staff working with this, this individual that obviously needs their help and assistance. December 26, 115, with Summerlin appearing at the Greenwood County Courthouse in Eureka, Kansas. This will be a Zoom proceeding for all other participants, but I want you to participate from that location. I have no doubt that they'll have effective Zoom audio and video for you to participate fully at, the, at that time, Mr. Summerlin, even if you don't have a phone. Understood. Okay. Uh, because he's in inpatient treatment, I'm not necessarily going to establish any reporting requirements between now and time of December the 26th unless uh, Mr. Gonzalez or Mr. Ketley specifically requests that. Okay, I see no. So just make sure you're in Eureka and ready to participate further in your dispositional phase of this proceeding, December 26th at 1.15, Mr. Summerlin. I'll be there. All right. If there's nothing further at this time, the Summerlin matter will be in recess and this meeting may be on for all.